Good afternoon. Just a reminder, please, to wait for the microphone before asking your question and state your name and who you work for. There'll be an embargo at the end for five minutes for questions um, for 10 p.m. UK time this evening. Trent, good to see you. It's Rob Dawson from Sky Sports Hello. News. Um, how are you finding your first World Cup experience? Um, different, obviously exciting as well. I've never really been, well, obviously I've never been to a major tournament before, so um, I'm excited to be here and I'm um, soaking up every minute of it and just trying to get to, to know the lads and settle into the team as good as possible. You're obviously the youngest member of the squad. Have you been the butt of any jokes, practical or otherwise? Um, no, not really, to be fair. The lads are being really, um, really good, good to me and um, yeah, they, they, they know that age doesn't really matter in football. It's, um, it's all about your ability and I think that they understand that. So um, everyone's got respect for each other in the, in the group and um, that, that's something that works well for us. How's Gareth Southgate? We heard the news about his dislocated shoulder. How did you hear about the news? Um, yeah, he broke the news to us yesterday when he had uh, his arm in a sling in the meeting. Um, so we all, we all obviously were wondering why, so he just, he just broke the news to us, and um, yeah, obviously we, we all wish him a, a speedy recovery from his injury. What did he say to you? I mean, he had a wry smile on his face, didn't he? Yeah, he, he joked about it, and um, he, he put in the, the, the funniest way possible, and, and said he, he hopes no one else had an, an afternoon like he did. Um, with the, obviously the injury that, that he got, so um, yeah, he, he tried to put a, a, a smile on everyone's face. Obviously, you've spent some time around Harry Kane now, and you've seen Ronaldo, Diego Costa score goals in this tournament so far as well, as has Harry Kane. How does he compare with the very best in the world, do you think? Yeah, I think he's an elite striker. He's uh, clinical in front of goal, and he's proved that over the last couple of seasons, and now he's proven it in a um, a World Cup with it with his two goals the other night, and obviously you can't just judge off one game. But um, his opening game, he scored two goals and two important goals for the team, especially, and it got us the win. And I think from him personally, he he, he prefers to to get the team result than his his own accolades, and and that's why he's um, the captain of the team. Talk to me about VAR. We've seen it used in this World Cup to to varying levels of success. How do the England team feel about how it's been used so far? Yeah, I think obviously there's more chance of getting the correct decisions in, in games and still we, we've seen that the, the officials still haven't got maybe every decision that we, we've, we've probably seen right, but um, they're, they're trying their best and I think with VAR they got the best chance of, of doing that. Was there some anger though from yourself and maybe the other members of the England side when you saw what happened to Harry Kane against Tunisia and those two penalty claims weren't reviewed? Um, obviously you, you want them decisions to go your way but I think we, we've spoke about refereeing decisions not, not going our way and it's part of the game that not every decision will go your way in, in football and you've got to get on with the game so I think we, we tried to ignore the fact that we, we didn't get the, the two claims that we claimed for and um, yeah we, we put that past us and I think the, the results and the, the manner that we won it showed that the lads can put it past them and focus on, on getting the win in the end, and that's what they've done. We've seen every single team play in this World Cup now. When you look at the other big nations in this tournament and how they've performed so far, how do you rate England's chances? How do you compare England to the best teams you've seen? Um, obviously, it's still early, early days, and most teams have only played one game, so it's, it's hard to... To, to, to pick and compare from just one game because teams can have off days and teams can have really good days so I think it, it, no one's really looking at it like that at the minute so we, we're just trying to focus on ourselves in, in camp and um, you, you can't look at teams that aren't in your group at this moment in time because you're not playing them right now, you're playing the teams in your group and we've still got Panama and, and Belgium to play and they're the two teams that we're focused on the most. Clearly you're competing with Kieran Trippier right now for, for that starting right wing back role. Um, how do you think he's doing? He's not making it easy for you, is he? <laughs> no, he's, he's a top, top player. I think um, yeah, he's proved it throughout the season with, with Tottenham and he's, he's, he proved it in the game the other day. And obviously you don't come to a World Cup expecting to get your, your place um, straight away. You've got to fight for it. And I think um, that's what all 23 of us are doing. We're all fighting for our places. and. Each day in training is competitive. Um, there's ba basically two players to each position, so you, you, 
you've you've kind of got direct opponents within training and you you're trying to outdo them and it, it takes that standard of, of training up at an extra level and essentially it makes us a better a better players each and every one of us if we're, we're training against players who are who are more motivated to to try hard and train and so I think um, yeah the only positives can come out of training in that in that sense and everyone's everyone's fighting for a position and um, yeah I think you, you you can't rest here you've got to you've got to keep fighting and keep wanting to 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 get your place into the team. Uh, Trent Steve Scott from ITV News. Um, s some pictures have emerged today of some notes carried by uh, one of the coaches suggesting that there may be changes. There may be a training schedule, but suggest there could be changes in the next team. Presumably by this stage in the week. The squad pretty much knows who's going to be starting at the weekend. Is that correct? Um, not not necessarily. No, we haven't been directly told of, of who's starting and who's not. So I think all the the positions are still up for grabs, really. And, and until the manager actually names the team, then it doesn't matter what's what's came out or what's leaked or anything like that. Because I know that the lads don't really focus on stuff like that until it's came out the manager's mouth. They're the only the, they're the only words that really matter to us at this moment in time. And um, we're trying not to get caught up in, in articles and, and everything like that. We're, tr we're trying to focus on ourselves and I think until the manager names the team then everyone's still fighting for their position. Would it be, would it be fair to say in, in any game if you uh, had information about how the opposition were going to start, how they were going to line up, would that help you? Would that give you an advantage? Well, yeah, I suppose if, if obviously we knew how the opposition were going to um, play, then we could plan for for it. We could really prepare ourselves. But I think um, you never know, and especially in a World Cup like this, you, you, there's, there's been surprises so far in the tournament, and I'm sure there'll be many more to come. So um, yeah, w again, like I said, we're just trying to focus on ourselves. When Gareth does reveal the starting eleven to the rest of the squad, does he ask you all to keep it to yourselves? Um. No, but I guess it's just general knowledge to, to, to do that, really. You don't want the opposition finding out who's playing and who's not until um, they're supposed to, essentially. So I think, obviously, you, you probably want to tell you, your family and friends and that, but um, you, tr you try and keep it under wraps as much as possible. Trent, David Ornstein from the BBC. Um, what have you been working on specifically as a team in training? Any set pieces, any specific game plans that... Finishing chances, for instance, for a lot of chances missed in, at the start of the game on Monday. Yeah, we're focused on um, all aspects of the game because you know their importance. And I think you touched on the, the set piece. I think if you if you look at the goal scored in the World Cup so far, the, um, a lot of them have been set pieces, and it shows that in in a in a tight competition like this, set pieces are really vital. And um, we scored two from set pieces the other, the other day, and. It's shown to be a bit of a positive and um, a threat for us going forward. So I think if we keep working on them and keep focusing on on different ways of of creating chances and scoring, then um, th there's more chance of us winning games. Do you think England can get away with missing the sort of chances they missed against Tunisia against some of the better teams? Um, no, I'd probably say not because the the, the high level of opposition you come up against and the the more you get punished, essentially. So you got to be really ruthless in front of goals. When you get when you get the chance to score, you 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 you've got to score them in these type of competitions. And I think going forward, um, if that's if that's hopefully the the only game where we've missed um, several chances, then that's a positive for us. And I think we'll learn from from not taking our chances in the first half last. Last game, and we'll, we'll we'll push forward in the the next couple of games. Have you been watching many of the other games, and if so, who are the teams that have impressed you so far in the tournament, and how do England do you think compare to them? Um, yeah, we try and watch as many games as we can because the whole team it's it goes without saying we love football, so we love watching football. Um, we all get excited to watch other games as as fans do with the World Cup. It's three games a day, it's every football fan's dream come true to, to, to watch so many games so in such a short space of time, so we watch as many as we can, but I think, um, yeah, like you said, we, we haven't really looked into depth of how we compare to other teams, but I'd probably say that there's teams out there that, that are really doing well, getting results uh, when they need to, and I think you've seen that th there's been late goals in games that 
the um, teams are, are, are getting a point or three points in, in the very last minute and it just shows that them points are really important to everyone in this competition. What's it like to be at your first World Cup? Uh, did you manage to explore some of St Petersburg or what did you get up to on your day off and also what have your friends and family been saying? Can you really believe you're, you're here? No, I think um, yesterday we, um, we went to St Petersburg as a family and um, looked around the, the, the beautiful city and seen um, some, some wonderful sights and it's, it's an opportunity to, to relax and, and spend time with the family essentially and to, to just to enjoy your time out here and, and take a step back from football when you can and I think it was really nice to, to spend time with the family and um, yeah, see a bit of the city and um, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed the, the day off when I've been given it and um, I'm enjoying my whole time out here and I think me, me, me friends back home are, are, are still shocked that I'm, that I'm here and they, they want to know every detail and um, yeah, it's hard to, to keep getting asked what's it like, what's it like, what's it like, so um, yeah, it's a bit re repetitive but it's one of them, you, you love to speak about the, the World Cup and being at your first World Cup. Just finally, is Deli Ali uh, likely to be fit? Do we know? Is he making good progress from the injury? Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not too sure about where he is at the, at the very minute. But I think it's it's looking positive for him. And um, yeah, I think I know he's working really hard behind the scenes to to get back fit because um, no one wants to miss um, a game and everyone wants to be available. So I'm sure he'll be working as hard as he can. When people are asking at home what you're getting up to. Have you, did you tell them unicorn racing before the photo came out? <laughs> no, definitely not. I think um, that was just for the, the lads that played in recovery. We were all at the training ground training. Um, the lads that didn't play, and I think um, that's just the, the type of camp that we went them in. It we were all um, full of joy, full of laughter, and really, um, really happy about how it's going and um, to, it's a great environment to be in. OK, you haven't solved my mystery then, because I was doing a live outside the team hotel one evening and there was a massive squeal from the swimming pool. What else is going on in there? Um, I don't know. There's different types of games that they get put into the swimming pool every day, to be fair, just to, just to liven it up a bit. So, um, yeah, I know there were, it was um, like, like water basketball today. Um, so the lads are just enjoying it every, every, every time because... I think if you're just getting in the pool every day, it gets a bit repetitive and I think the, the staff behind the scenes are, are, are really doing well in, in keeping us all really entertained. This tournament has thrown up some surprises. Probably something we were prepared for was Mo not being able to be at his best in this World Cup. Have you or Jordan spoken to him since Egypt failed to progress? Um, no, I haven't spoken to him. I think it's he's in his, his team camp and I think it's... It's important for him to, to be with his, his, his national team at the minute and um, focus on hopefully getting his, his win in a World Cup on when he plays again in his, in his third game. But obviously it's, it's not good to see one of, your, one of your teammates not being able to, to take part in, in the first game of a World Cup for his, his nation in such a long time. And he played a vital part in, in them getting there. But it's, it's one of them he'll bounce back and I'm sure... Um, Next season, he'll, he'll come back fresh and 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 and, um, and, and better and, and stronger. You can get some tips for Gareth on how to recover from a dislocated <laughs> shoulder. Um, I think it's 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 a similar similar sort of injury. So um, yeah, I suppose I, I could probably um, speak to him all about how, how we can recover quick from that. We haven't spoken to you um, all since Iceland drew with Argentina. Did you all watch that game together? Yeah, we. Um, I'm not sure if it was together, but we we all. I think we all watched it. And yeah, it was a it was a surprise. I think many people didn't really see it coming, but I think it's a credit to Iceland the way that they've performed over the last few years, especially. And I think coming from such a small nation to the to, to the World Cup and doing so well so far is is a credit to them. Do you think it eased the hurt of the Euro exit to Iceland that even Messi couldn't score against them before the first match? Um, not too sure. I think obviously a lot of the lads don't really want to go back to, to to that night um in France and, and relive it because it was um such a disappointment. But I think it's um, important to 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 give credit to to such a nation and and how they've 
they've done so well in, in recent years. There was that question mark, do England struggle more against lower teams than they do against the bigger teams and they get worried that they'll shame themselves. That didn't happen against Tunisia. So going into this against Panama, that really is the fairy tale story of this World Cup. Does the Tunisia game help that as well? Um, yeah, I think we've, um, we've all acknowledged that um, games come about where you are possibly the the favourites to win and the other teams the underdog and I think all of us have experienced them games in our careers with, with clubbing it in some way the country obviously so I think we're all pos probably um, we all know what it what it's like to be the, the favourite and maybe there's that little bit of added pressure but um, I think the lads when I went when about the Tunisia game perfectly and I'm sure um, we'll, we'll all prepare for Panama in the, the same way. Were you surprised at how many fans <coughs> did turn up for the match at the opening? Uh, how many England fans didn't come to the opening match? Are you hoping the number will be larger for this game? Um, to be fair, the, 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 the fans were incredible at the stadium. The, the support was really good for the, for the team and it was really positive. And, um, it, it doesn't really matter about the number of fans to us. It just matters that we know that we've got that support, no matter whether it be back at home or out here. It, it, it doesn't really bother us. It, it just coming coming out of the game and seeing the videos from the way that the, everyone celebrated the last minute goal was incredible, and and all the lads have seen all the videos, and it, it, it just means that, that bit more knowing that you've got that support coming from from back home. Composure on the ball, especially. Yeah, he's a he's a top quality player, and I think obviously that's why he's been picked to to be here out in the World Cup. And I think he showed when he came on the other day that he can change a game as well. So um, yeah, he's he's an asset to any team he plays in with his physicality and the the way he can he can he can play in the midfield is is um is rare with with such a a big lad. But he's um he's a top quality player, and he's he's definitely an asset for us. And I think. Um, yeah, if he does get the chance to start, then he, he'll take it and he'll, um, he'll put a good performance in. Okay, we'll end the, uh, the live section there.